French are baptized chickens.
Within the next, we have, uh, this is the first Sunday service that Lynn and I have been in Maine, so I've been watching from afar and whatnot, but we're just so excited to be here, and um, just the fact that we are all here able to worship is, is a small miracle in and of itself. Um, looking back at the pictures of devastation following our winter storms, um, I, yeah, some of us were just didn't know if we'd be able to get the place back together again, and through the the grace of God and through lots of volunteers and lots of other um, craftsmen and uh, engineers and whatnot, you know, we, did, we were able to start worship on schedule um, back on Father's Day. And we're here again, and uh, not everything, not everything's done, and we we're continue to work on it. But we're so glad that you all are here. One of our other very nice things, and those of you who get the booth, they register. We were actually made the paper last day, and it's a picture of our new pier and dock, and uh, those were just completed, and so for, uh, we now have an active waterfront, and once again, for that, we're also very, very thankful. Um, all Saints welcomes people from all denominations um, to, to worship. We like to think of ourselves as a, as a place of prayer for all people. Um, if you are new to us today, there are cards in the, um, there's a wrap in the, uh, the back of the church, Ron's holding it up. We'd love it if you would share your personal contact information with us so that we can put you on our mailing list because we do send out some periodicals and letters um, during, during the course of the season. So please, please register with us if, if you're so inclined. Um, having said that, uh, we will begin our service singing hymn number seven. We continue on page 299 of our Book of Common Prayer, page 299, with our service of holy baptism. Mm -hmm. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, the Lord, now and forever. Amen. And skipping down to the bottom, there is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God has called to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord is with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O oh Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. <laughs> a reading from the book of Samuel. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare, and drink from his cup, and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who would come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guests who would come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb for a soul, and because he did this thing, and because he has no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I appointed you king for Israel, and I have rescued from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son, for you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all these are Israel and before the sun. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, please, let's read together Psalm 51 by half verse. I have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, while I have my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sins are before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and not right in your judgment. 
Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. <laughs> Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. That the God in your rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And God, all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a fresh spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of saving help again. And to sustain me with your wonderful spirit. A reading from the book of Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility, humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity and the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made the activity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above <coughs> all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. All of us came to the unity in the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with it, which is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Hymn number 321, please stand.
one quick announcement before the reading of the gospel. One quick announcement before the reading of the gospel. Someone who's left um, a car running uh, up on the road, Pennsylvania license plate. So we're all going to pay attention to the gospel while you <laughs> take care of your health. So just want to make sure you know. <laughs> the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one holy, loving, liberating, life-giving God. Amen. Amen. Please. So in just a few moments, um, I am going to initiate the newest member to Team Jesus, the newest Christian. Uh, through the sacrament of holy baptism, we are going to welcome Maeve into our community of faith, baptizing her in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. And I'll take some oil and mark a cross on her forehead, sealing her by the Holy Spirit and marking her as Christ's own forever. And it just so happens, I learned, that Maeve turned one last May, and she happens to share a birthday with my daughter, Grace, who turned 23 last May. And as I have been reflecting on Maeve and remembering the first year of Grace's life, I remember what it was like, and I imagine you um, have been uh, focusing on this too as Maeve's parents to make sure that our children got the nourishment that they need. Going to that six week check-in and the three month and the six month and the nine month and the year always to make sure that, oh it's fine, <laughs> um, to make sure that uh, our children were putting on pounds, right, and gaining weight, and thriving, not just surviving, but thriving. Well, the scripture today is about nourishment, is about nourishment. What it is that we as human beings need not just to survive, it's all 
Okay, but to fry. Yeah. See ya. How wonderful. How wonderful. Last Sunday, um, if you were in church, you would have heard the feeding of the 5,000, right? Uh, there were thousands of people who were drawn to Jesus and drawn to his teaching and were witnessing his healing and team Jesus had been working God's work among them and so people were drawn to this one and they had been there for a while and it was getting late if you remember and so Jesus disciples said well they need to go home they need to get something to eat and Jesus said you feed them you have what you need to feed them and let God work God's mercy through you and so 5,000 men were fed and imagine the women and children who were there too so thousands of people were fed and were nourished and got what they need to be satisfied well today's scripture finds Jesus on the other side of the sea and the people who had witnessed this miracle and who had been fed and nourished followed him. They wanted more of that. They wanted more. And so we find Jesus today with a lot of people wanting more. And Jesus calls them out. He uses this as a teaching moment and Jesus says, I know why you are searching for me. You want more of that bread. You want more of that food. You are hungry. You all want more of that. And Jesus takes this opportunity to say, what I have to offer is more than just food, is more than just nourishment for your physical bodies. What I have to offer is that which nourishes that part of you that is not seen, that part of you that lasts beyond our mortal flesh. I am the bread of life, Jesus says. What I have to give you goes beyond just fish and loaves. <laughs> so who are we really? We are human beings, yes? You are a human being. Welcome to the human family. <laughs> and if you look at those two words, human and being, let's just Focus on those two for just a moment. Human, from humus, Latin, of the earth. So yes, we are of the earth. We are also human beings. Beings from the great I am, the creator of the universe, the source of all that is seen and unseen, that which has no beginning and no end. That is also of what we are made, beings. We are human beings. And so yes, our human selves need physical nourishment. And as we enter into the world, we have to be mindful of giving our bodies that which it can take, yes. And as we continue growing into our bodies, we hear about the omega fatty three acids, right? And all the things that we need to make sure our cholesterol is lower and proteins and nutrients for our physical bodies. And what about the nourishment for our souls? What about the nourishment for the light that we are? I don't know if there are any quantum physicists here in the house. If there are, I'd love to have coffee with you this week. But scientists now are being able to articulate what spirituality and wisdom has said of the ages that there is a greater reality than that which we physically see and touch. It's all energy, light, consciousness. What about that part of our human beingness that needs nourishment? What about that part? Traditional interpretation of today's gospel has talked about uh, Jesus' words, I am the bread of life, and linked that specifically to communion and to the feast that we are invited to have. Do you want to come here? Do you want to come say hello? She's good. Um, 
we have lent, has lent that nourishment to the feast of communion, to the bread and the wine. And yes, of course, uh, being nourished at the table of the Lord is nourishment for our souls. And I'd like to invite um, an even more expansive lens and framing into how to understand nourishment for your soul. In Jesus' words, I am the bread of life. As I reflect on what nourishes my soul, three particular things come to mind and heart. One is to have a life of purpose, to live a life of purpose and meaning, to live into the person that God created you to be. Now, maybe we are going to discover, and hopefully you will share with us, the things that Maeve brings with her into this world. Perhaps she is a singer. Perhaps she will be a climber. She has something that is unique to her that she brings into the world. And so to be able to live her life with purpose and meaning using what she has, that is nourishment, not just for her soul, but for the lives of those whom she will encounter. We know people, right, who have gifts and skills that have been honed throughout the years that have given people meaning to be able to offer those gifts to the community, to live life with purpose and meaning, to be a wood carver, to be a healer. This is nourishment not just for my soul, to be able to offer my gift of speaking and writing, but hopefully nourishment for more. So to live life with purpose and meaning is nourishment for your soul. What about the nourishment that comes from connection? Connection and real relationship and belonging to one another, deep, meaningful connection with friends and with family. Isn't that too nourishment? for your soul. Connection with the beauty of nature. It's such a gift and privilege for me and my family to come here to Maine every summer and just to be able to soak in and feel the nourishment of this view. It's literally feeding me, and I imagine that it feeds you too. So there's nourishment of soul that comes with living a life of purpose and meaning. There's nourishment of soul that comes with meaningful connection with human beings, with nature. And there is the nourishment of soul that can come from a regular practice of prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation to connect with the one who calls you each by name, who loves you for who you are. So there's nourishment of the body, of humus, of the human part of us, and there's nourishment of soul that Jesus speaks out, I am the bread of life. One of the primary messages of John's gospel is this message that Jesus came to show us the way to live an abundant life, not just to survive, but to thrive as human beings. And that is that which we lift up today. And so in just a few moments, we'll be baptizing baby Nave. But I want to end with a story that um, is one of my favorite stories to share. And I apologize if you've heard this already from me. Um, it is a story that comes from um, our Native American um, brothers and sisters that has to do with a young one who is trying to find nourishment in terms of wisdom from an elder. And the young one is in conversation with his grandfather. And the grandfather says, there is a battle between two wolves that happens within each and every human being. And the young one says, what is this battle, grandpa? The grandfather says, well, there is one wolf that represents greed and envy and hatred, and fear, and isolation, and anxiety, and all the dark things that can consume us. That's what one wolf represents. The other wolf represents hope, and care, 
and mercy and compassion and forgiveness and patience and forbearance and commitment and all these light-filled qualities within human being. And the young one says, well, Grandpa, which wolf wins? If they're battling, which wolf wins? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. The one you feed. And so today, Jesus, our way and truth and life, is reminding us to be intentional, not just about the nourishment of body, to be equally, perhaps even more intentional about the nourishment of soul, knowing that it is all one. There is no separation of body, soul, mind, and spirit. It is all one. And when we nourish our souls, we are nourishing our bodies. And I invite you, as we welcome May into this body of Christ, to give gratitude for all the ways in which we are nourished through one another and through God's grace. Amen. 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 <laughs> While May makes her way up, I'm going to invite you to turn to your books of common prayer. And we are going to continue on page 301. 301. Yes, you're done. What a great job walking. Oh my goodness. We did start it last week. I sent it So the candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Maeve Catherine to receive the sacrament of baptism. Turning to page 302. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce that. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce that. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce that. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And will everyone now please stand? And skipping to the bottom now of page 303, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? We pray. Let us join with she who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Up the third day. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue with the apostles' teaching and fellowship? in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will, God. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God. 
Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear her. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord, hear her. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord, hear her. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear her. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation will now be seated, please, and we will continue with the baptism. All right. It's hard to get tired. We're going to have to ask now. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit. Be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. So here we go. Ready? You baptize your crayon. Yeah. I baptize you, Mary Catherine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And, oh, and, oh, here we go. Amen. <laughs> Sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere. That we know she has. The spirit to know and to love you. And the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. 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 Peace.
Just a few announcements. I know it's a tradition here at All Saints. If this is your first time um, worshiping here, um, you are invited. You're not obligated, but you're invited to stand up, tell us who you are and where you hail from. And so we'll, st we'll start from this side, moving from the front to the back. Um, any folks who'd like to introduce themselves? Sure. Walterboro, Maine. You're sorry? Walterboro, Maine. Great. Welcome. Also, Walter Burrow, but St. Andrew's still my daughter. Okay, and your names? Bruce Krause. Nancy Galt. And I'm Mrs. Bruce Krause, Eleanor Krause. Walter, <laughs> and sometimes St. Andrew's, but we thought we'd go down today of all days. What? Welcome. Welcome. Sorry I missed you. Myra Dennis, born in Jamaica, lived in New York, and lived there in Cape Verde. Oh, welcome, welcome, Myra. Good to have you. And moving back up, yes. Bruce and Mary Steve's voice is in Carlton and Christ Church in Pensacola. We're back after three years out. Oh, my goodness. Good to have you back. We're back from Sacred Heart Cathedral. In Pensacola. In Pensacola. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you back. Anyone else on this side? And then from the back, moving up. Anyone who wants to introduce yourselves? Marisa Patrick Allen from Baltimore, oh, Maryland, <laughs> and Indian Island in the Stony Bay. Does she look familiar? No. <laughs> <laughs> My sister. My <laughs> sister. Oh, yeah. Previously, if, if she wanted to like switch places, I would give this one <laughs> And this is my husband, Bruce McKenzie, from Maine. Mm -hmm. Great. So good to have you. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Christina Talent, and I'm from McLean, Virginia. And I'm here with my mother-in-law, Eileen, who's here regularly during the summer. And um, they've been coming here since I met my husband over 20 years ago. And so this is the first time I've come along. Great, thank you. Wonderful job. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Rick, Rick Wise, my wife Carmela, uh, we're the grandparents of Maeve, and we're here on Southport. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, just a couple of other quick announcements. On Tuesday, I will be leading a scripture study, Bible study, right on the porch, 9 o'clock in the morning. And um, I think that is all I have. Just some what? coffee hour and gluten free week. Ah, yeah, thank you. So, coffee hour is right after the service, and I know there's some treats and beverages. And gluten-free wafers will be available. I'll give some instructions for communion. Ron, you have something? I, yes, I'd like to give you a save the date. On Sunday, August 25th, right after the service, we'd like you to stay, bring your caps and scarves and mittens 
we're going to be recording the Christmas music for our Christmas Eve service. Right, August 25th. What follows is the feast of our Lord. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome. Just some guidance about communion. You're welcome to come up and receive the bread and the wine. You can intinct, um, which means put the wafer in the chalice, which is the cup, or you can choose to drink from the cup, or you can refrain from that and just have the bread. Um, you can also choose if you prefer not to have the bread or the wine, but you want to participate, you can come up with your hands crossed across your, your arms, crossed across your chest, and ask for a blessing or a prayer. Um, all those ways are ways to participate. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to our Lord and God.
continue with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. page 368. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will not end. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say,
invite you to stand and join me in our post communion prayer on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have led us to spiritual food, to the sacrament of body and blood, set us now into the world in peace, serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us along the way. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God who is creating and is redeeming and is sustaining be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And our concluding hymn is hymn 522, 522.